sacrifice everything that she ever knew, the freedom that she had, to join me in my world. And then, pretty soon after that, I end up sacrificing everything that I know to join her in her world. I mean, Tom, it was almost like that each joined a cult. And that sacrifice involved cutting out all a uh, sense of criticism, anyone who disagreed with them, family members who challenged them, and they just have each other. Well, it's all about how they're going to make their money and fame and fortune. It has nothing to do with the truth. I mean, these, those three programmes were really suffering. After the second one, I really felt quite sick. It was an exercise of <laughs> self-harm. And so to, to watch it, you really felt in the end, I'm really punishing myself. Yeah. You're like Goebbels or the Third Reich. <laughs> Netflix succeeded in sort of Stalinist propaganda and making you wash your hand and ask yourself all the time, is this true? Of course it's not true. We're being brainwashed by these Hollywood people who think this is the way to make money and, in the end, destroy our monarchy to make their fortune. There are, of course, some specific attacks, Tom, uh, including this one on the Prince and Princess of Wales. Watch. Always been a hugger. I didn't realise that that is really a jarring for a lot of Brits. I guess I'd started to understand very quickly that the formality on the outside carried through on the inside. That there is a forward-facing way of being and then you close the door and you go, oh, great. Okay, we can relax now. But that formality carries over on both sides. And that was surprising to me. They're not even trying to hide it anymore, are they? They hate William and Kate. They're jealous of William and Kate. And this particular incident, I mean, it was the first time they'd ever met. What, what did she expect, Kate, well, to run in and give her a huge hug? But was it, was it even true? I mean, you could probably ask not. yourself, they're probably not. And this is from a woman who attacks her father mercilessly in the series, a man who she abandoned for months to the media and now presents her mother, Doria, speaking for the first time, telling outright lies about her ex-husband. I mean, this was a calculated attempt against the families. I mean, the one thing that Samantha Markle always predicted was, just like Meghan turned against our family, she'll get Harry to do the same. And that was an exercise of doing that. And it was shocking, shocking of Harry to sit there and let his wife attack Kate, who'd been so good to him, who was his friend. And what would Diana think of Harry attacking William in that way? She'd be She'd appalled be by her son's behaviour. And that was, so, again, so nauseating, the way he kept on bringing in Diana. Diana, who appealed to the media all the time, who phoned journalists secretly, who brought Martin Bashir into her office, who cooperated with Andrew... Morton, who kept on calling Richard Kay. I mean, this is ridiculous. Well, Meghan herself. And Meghan uh, herself. In the months before she met uh, Harry, was setting up paparazzi pictures in London. She now looks as if the paparazzi <laughs> are literally the devil she incarnate. Begged, she begged the paparazzi to photograph her, and they wouldn't. And when they did, she says, oh, I don't want to, I'm hurt. And that ridiculous story about how they first met, the whole thing was a tissue of inaccuracies, to be polite. Well, because what do you make of that? Because as you know, Harry was always very insistent in 2017, telling the BBC uh, it was a blind date. All of a sudden, there's a completely new story that they met via Instagram. So well, which not, are we meant to believe? But not only that, can you really believe that that photograph of Meghan wearing a droopy, snoopy uh, nose and things somehow said, oh, that's the woman for me. It's ridiculous. I mean, this actually was calculated to undermine my book. Because, of course, I got the real story that he got a blind date and was called up and all that. And she, and this is the other thing, which is one of the many, many lies she tells, that she arrived in London, full career, single girl, wasn't interested. Of course, she'd been coming to London since 2013, hunting for a man to marry. Yes. She wanted an Englishman. She was on a manhunt. And she also wanted a famous. And she wanted a famous. And she arrived in London immediately when she went to Wimbledon, talked to the woman she was working for, and said, you know, Harry, can you arrange a blind date? And the woman did. The whole thing is a tissue of lies. And Netflix knows it's untrue. And that is what's so shocking, that those executives in Hollywood are plotting to destroy the monarchy because they just see money in that, as do, of course, the Sussexes. Shame on them. Uh, there was one 
really shocking moment, Tom, and this has been going viral uh, throughout today, because I think it was one of the only moments, actually, where you got a sense of cracks starting to show between Harry and Meghan. So this is when Meghan really mocked our culture and the fact that she had to curtsy uh, in front of the late Queen the first time she met her. Watch this and keep your eye on Harry during this, by the way. I mean, Americans will understand this. We have medieval times, dinner and tournament. It was like that. Like, I curtsied as though I was like... Pleasure to meet you, Your Majesty. She's taking the piss out of the Queen. Taking the piss. And worse than that, like, because there's no way... In her original description of the curtsy, it was a small curtsy in Windsor Park. The idea that she bent down like that is just ludicrous. But, you know, she's hamming it up. She's a third-rate actress. She can't do proper acting, even. So that's why she's doing it. Really, Dan, what was the worst part, really, is not that in the program. It was that they cast every white man and woman in Britain as racist. Mm. Everyone is racist. And every Brexit voter is racist. Is doubly racist. And somehow, that is what really stank. I mean, you, going on and on about the racism of the tabloids, but only one example, one sentence on an online thing, but no other examples, and then go on and on that we're all, if we've got a white skin, we're clearly racist. I found that a very well, objective. Well, indeed, Tom. And actually, uh, the only specific example of racism that Meghan ever recalled in her own life uh, was a despicable example where her mother, Doria, was called the N-word. That happened in Los Angeles. Exactly. Where Meghan was born. And by the way, also, all of the paparazzi pursuits of Harry and Meghan took place in either the US or Canada. None in the UK where they had protection. And not only that, it was never people who were employed. It was freelancers. But Meghan's father, Thomas, told me explicitly throughout her childhood, throughout her life, even into Hollywood, she never experienced any racism. She never, she never came home saying, I've been in any way targeted. There's that one example where she had to tick a box to describe yeah. her race. But it's and that was it. isn't it, to suggest uh, that the US is some sort of a place of racial harmony. And then you come over to the UK, yeah. the most tolerant country in the world. And, she and discovers that's when you discover racism. Race. The whole thing was like... Right. Tom, I've got to ask you, next week is looking like that's where the real grenades are going to be thrown at the royal family. I mean, we've got a bit of it today. There was a hint of it. But next week is when we get to Megxit and all the really contentious issues that you've obviously written about. Uh, what's King Charles going to do about this? And what do you think he should do about it? Well, I fear that uh, King Charles doesn't like confrontation. He doesn't want to take a stand against his son. And at the moment, he's going to thinking of doing nothing. But I don't think that can be sustained. He's got to take a lead. And I think the people of this country, the monarchists, will say... This has now got to end. Whether he says it or whether uh, William, uh, Prince of Wales, actually says the truth, that we welcomed Meghan, she is the one who dictated her departure. She is the one who's declared war, uh, has got to be decided. But it's got to be decided this week. And the courtiers in Buckingham Palace have got to start thinking pretty hard how to protect not only Britain, but also our monarchy and our global reputation. Because believe me, this Netflix uh, series is going to do huge damage to Britain's reputation. Yeah, the time for a respectful silence is...